Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Sydney. Let's chat about the 13 books that I read in the month of February. Honestly, February felt so long to me, like it could have been two or three Januaries put into one month. But I cannot complain because I had a pretty good reading month. February was actually a very heavy vlog month for me. A lot of the videos I posted were reading vlogs, which was really fun. It was challenging, but it was really rewarding. And I'm really proud of all of those videos, vlogs that I put out. But that being said, a lot of these books are featured in those vlogs. So I will be going through every book, but I will give like abbreviated thoughts reviews here just because I feel like I've already talked about them on the channel, you know? But I will link all of them down below if you want to hear even more detail. One of the vlogs is reading your guys' best books of 2023. And the two books that I featured in that video were Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson and Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone is actually one of the best reading experiences I've had in a very long time. I think this book might go in my top 10 of the year, if not definitely in the honorable mentions, but I was just losing my mind. I loved all of the twists. I loved the writing. I loved the voice that Benjamin Stevenson wrote in. Like it was a six star read for me. It was so much fun. It's like a classic closed door mystery sort of. This family is having this like reunion after one of their sons got locked up in prison because the other son kind of ratted him out for killing someone. Not kind of, he did rat him out for killing someone. <laughs> now they're having a big reunion on this like remote ski town village resort and some random person shows up dead by burn injuries, but it's at a ski resort and there was no fire. So it was an inhalation burn injury. It's all very weird. And our narrative goes through each member in the family describing their like situation, kind of ruling them out, giving us information on what is actually going on because this guy that turns up dead is related to the family in some way. And the title is true. Everyone in my family has killed someone. You learn all of these things as you're reading the story and it's just, oh my God, it was so much fun. Then I read Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This one was like a four and a half out of five for me. It is following Shakespeare's wife and kids predominantly during the time of the plague. And it is so like beautifully tragic. The writing is stunning. The portrayal of grief over losing a child is not something that I have obviously felt, but it is something that I feel like I could feel through this storytelling and through this writing. It was kind of next level in a way. So go into this knowing that it is a heavy read, but it is so beautiful. I'm really glad that I read it. Next, I read The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. This is about our two main characters, Lily and Nick. Lily is a big bookworm and falls in love with this fantasy series that has not been continued by the author. And one day she decides to email the author and just kind of let him know like, hey, I loved your book. It meant a lot to me, blah, 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 blah. And the author ends up writing back. They start discoursing over email for like months. They kind of get into like a little online relationship. They never see each other. Turns out the author is her brand new neighbor because he ends up moving into New York. And he knows that Lily is the girl that he had broken things off with via email, but Lily doesn't know that he is who he is. But the situation at hand is that Lily needs a date to her sister's wedding. And Nick agrees to help her find one, but ultimately it gets messy. You know, they start falling for each other. One thing leads to another and it's a whole thing. The premise was super cute. I loved the email parts as well because I love like a pen pal situation. So this book was a lot of fun. I ended up giving this a strong, a strong four, 4.25 out of five. Another book that I read this month is The Cartographers by Ping Shepard. This was part of a little chatty vlog that was exclusive to my book club since it was the buddy read pick for last month. This one is a bit of a backlist. It is following our main character, Nell, who has a passion for cartography. Her dad is one of like the most renowned cartographers in the New York Public Library system. But her and her father are now estranged for like seven years or so because of a large fight that you learn about in the story that gets her fired from the New York Public Library. And now once her father has died, she finds this really obscure, seemingly meaningless map in this secret compartment that he has in his desk. And it sends her on this wild goose chase to try to figure out what's going on, what actually happened to her father. Like it goes a lot deeper than the surface level. It has a little bit of like magical realism roped into it with the mystery of, you know, the map and the father and just that whole situation. Like there's a lot going on within this book and I am frustrated by it <laughs> because I had so much fun. In the very beginning, I was like, oh my God, is this going to be five stars? And then as it kept going, it kept going like lower and lower. And now it's sitting at like a three and a half, which is still a great rating. You know, I still feel good about it, but my problem lies with how the characters were written. I had a really hard time 
I'm connecting to anyone. And I normally don't have that problem. I just didn't feel like the characters were really well fleshed out. We didn't really get a whole ton of background. And then the magic system itself was a little bit confusing to me, a little bit messy. That part could have just been my consumption of the story. Maybe I was just missing some things, but ultimately by the end, I was just a little bit frustrated, feeling so strongly about it in the beginning and then just getting progressively more like confused about the plot and the characters. Feeling nothing for the characters is the main reason it got a lower score for me because the plot and the storyline itself, very, very cool. Okay, now I read Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. This book was so great. The setting is sort of like a college. Our main character is Kiki. She runs a radio show called Brown Sugar and she has people like write in questions about relationships, just about men, about just their life in general. And they talk about it on the radio show. Kiki is a big supporter of like the feminine power and not letting any man walk all over you. So when she is sort of preaching about the waste man of Whitewell, which is the college that is in the book, the last thing that she expected is to fall for that said waste man who is not a waste man at all. He is Malachi and at a weekly meetup that these characters have, they end up making out mostly for her to get someone else off of her back. But regardless, they make out and it starts a lot of drama because she had previously, hours ago, talked about Malachi being a waste man and that the women population of the college need to like steer clear of him. So they end up striking up a deal to fake date and it just gets a little bit messy because they start catching feelings obviously. And it's just a, it's a beautiful book. It was written so well. I absolutely loved these two main characters so much. Their chemistry and their banter were so phenomenal. One of my favorite character dynamics to date, because I can't fall in love with a romance book unless there is just palpable chemistry. And there is, there is in this book. And I loved it. Four and a half to five stars. Next, I did a reread of The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This was my January book club pick. So I read it in early February to prepare for the book club live show. And man, it was just as good, if not better than the first time that I read it. I love this book so much. It is one of my favorites of all time. When I think of lyrical, poetic, flowery writing, this is the bar. This book is the bar for lyrical writing for me. I love it with my whole heart. There is a slight level of pretentiousness about the storytelling that I just eat up. The plot gets pretty weird and hazy. And I still have questions about what I read even the second time around because every single thing in this book is a puzzle piece for the grander puzzle of the entire book. Like it is a feat. It is beautiful. It is a six star read for me. I will always love it. Next, I did my yearly February romance reading vlog. This year I did a kind of like a list video in a way. I looked at the most downloaded books in Kindle Unlimited for 2023 and read those top three books. The first one was Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is a small town romance and I absolutely loved it. I did. I really liked this book. I can't wait to continue it because I really enjoyed Lucy Score's writing. I liked the main character a lot. The romance was good. The only problem with it was the sex scenes were just not it for me. The word descriptors were just putting me off. But like I said, I will continue because I had a great time. I gave this a four out of five. Then I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang. This one was a very middle of the road book for me. I liked the little suspense thriller like subplot underneath the romance. I thought that was interesting. I didn't mind the dynamic between the two main characters, but the whole thing just kind of felt like a three star read for me. Um, I go into to a little bit detail on all of these in that reading vlog, but it was a three, three star read. Then I read Right Man, Right Time by Megan Quinn. This was my first sports romance. Would you believe it? I didn't know that this was book three in a series, even though I feel like you can read romance series out of order more so than other genres. But yeah, this was a third book in a series. Didn't know that going into it. I loved the sports dynamic. Loved it. Will continue to look for sports romances for sure, especially hockey since it's my favorite sport. I had a really good time with this book and with this romance, I liked most things about it. The only thing was the age gap for me. I just didn't love that she was still in college and he was in his 30s and that's fine. I don't know, is it? <laughs> I didn't I didn't love it. And I don't remember what I rated it, but in my heart right now, it feels like a three and a half, maybe a four if I forget about the age gap, but uh, yeah, like a three and a half. Of course, I did a reading vlog for House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. That vlog is spoiler free and spoiler filled at the very end of the video, but very quickly, I felt like this book was better 
than the second book. So my rating forever is House of Earth and Blood is five out of five. House of Sky and Breath was like two, two or three out of five. I think ultimately I'm giving this one like a three and a half, maybe a four. It depends on what aspect I'm focusing on. There's not too much I can say about this book without giving out spoilers. So broadly, I will say that the info dumping in this book was absolutely insane. There was so much that I felt like I needed to like have like a protein snack after some chapters because I was like expended so much energy trying to understand. But the overall story, I liked this storyline better than the second one, if that makes sense. So yeah, I mean, I had a good time. I didn't absolutely love it, but I don't know. I felt fine about it. Then the last vlog that I did last month was reading subscribers worst books of 2023. <laughs> and again, broadly for these three books, first one was House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Man, a lot of people hate this book. A lot of people love this book. More people hate this book, I suppose, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> I had a good time with this one. I was told that since I was upset with the final ending of Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, that I would probably like this one. And that didn't make sense to me until I actually read House Across the like, and now I understand it and I agree. The woman in the window aspect in this book was just so much fun. I ate it up. And the thing that I think Riley Sager did really well in this book was make every single character seem suspicious in some way or another. I didn't trust anyone, even the main character. And the themes and elements within this story, like he actually really went for it this time and I'm being vague on purpose. It was pretty good. I gave it a four out of five. The other two books in that video, one of them is Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. And I am so upset. I'm more upset. I'm probably not more upset than you guys, but I didn't really like this. It was like a solid two and a half to three for me. I don't think that it was bad. I don't think that it was poorly written, but I just was bored to tears. I was not excited to be reading it. I didn't want to read it when I wasn't physically sitting down to read. It reminded me of the show Good Girls and that's all well and good, but I felt like I knew the story. I felt like I'd already read it. And so I was just, I was just bored. I'm upset about it, but I just didn't like it. That's it, I guess. <laughs> Finally, I did read You Shouldn't Have Come Here by Geneva Rose. Um, this book was so chaotic, so wild. Um, I think you should just watch that vlog because I don't even know if I have the energy to talk about this book again. It was a very interesting afternoon when I read this story. The main character books a Airbnb in the middle of Wyoming and the owner of the Airbnb is staying there with her, which I don't know, I think is weird, first and foremost, but there's no Wi-Fi, there's no service, there's no nothing at this house, which, you know, is fine in the middle of Wyoming, but not when the guy that you're staying with is a literal psychopath. And it's just so wild. <laughs> because she's like integrated into his life in a weird way. Like he's throwing himself like a birthday party and she's there and all of the small town that is also there at the party is just, you know, mean to her because they don't trust her. And, and I, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird. It was just a wild storyline of a book. <laughs> but ultimately I think that it was a two out of five, maybe two and a half because you know, I did enthusiastically read it. But yeah, I don't think that it was good, but I really, but I had a great time. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure those are all the books that I read in the month of February. February, a really strong month in terms of quantity, but the quality definitely was a mixed bag, which is fine. <laughs> I was asking for it with the types of videos I chose to film. So regardless, thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still watching, then leave me the honey emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, please do subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.